Last one. That's the one I was looking for. Hey everybody. I'm just back here finishing up some more 38 cases and loading up a few. Uh, just crimping them up some. I'm not showing the entire process. Well, it's sure been a hot Sunday. Show you guys what a uh, butter bowl full of whoop ass looks like. That's a hundred rounds, 125 grain Hornady XTP bullets over a charge of tight group powder and some federal primers. I got it all wrote down, all the info. We keep up with stuff like that. I thought I was kind of being slick, you know, by, by uh, putting them in this here. If somebody broke in the house, they might, <laughs> they, they might not want to look in the butter bowl. <laughs> Whereas, if they, uh, if they saw a case like that sitting around, they'd know what that was and they'd grab that up. I've got uh, I've got store bought cases for for ammunition. I just thought I'd try something different. It'll keep good in that. Well, I was just gonna do a little video tonight, and back here in the loading room, maybe we'll talk a little bit. Let me get some of this stuff out of the way. I'm gonna pause you for a minute. clear out some of that reloading stuff. I wanted to bring out a few of my deer rifles and kind of show them off a little bit. Do a kind of a show and tell on them I guess you'd say. Mostly I hunt with a 30-30 or 44 Magnum around here but when I do get the chance to hunt someplace where I can stretch it out a little bit and get a little distance I got these rifles here that I use. This is a uh, this is a Remington model 742 Woodsmaster. It's unloaded. It's a box fed magazine. I think it holds four or five rounds. It's a semi-automatic. With the last round hold open. Actually the follower on the magazine holds the last round. It's an oldie but a goodie. This rifle was made in 1969. May of 1969 to be exact. I looked it up. It's, uh, it's got a uh, just a cheap Walmart red dot on it. I think it's a center point or something like that. But it does a pretty good job for what I use it for around here and yeah, if I was going to take it somewhere I'd put a put one of my good scopes on it. Set it up for that but it does alright for around here. I've got a little shell holder built up with a foam pad and made a cheek, cheek riser out of it where it's more comfortable to shoot. I like that gun. It's chambered in 308. Does a real good job. Here's another 308 that I have. And this one here is a uh, 
This one here is a Savage Model 11. Got the old Indian Chief on the butt plate there. It's got a Nikon scope on it. It's a real good rifle. It's a bolt action rifle. It's a magazine, magazine fed rifle. I think it holds four rounds, four or five, four rounds, I believe, in the magazine. It'd be real firm with that magazine to get it seated in there. I have, I have had it fall out before. That's a, that's a failing, a shortcoming of Savage Rifles. It's got your, it's got your three position safety. All the way back locks the bolt and locks the trigger. Halfway up locks the trigger, but you can still operate the bolt. All the way forward fire. It's got a nice, pretty jewel bolt on it. Just a good rifle, good accurate rifle. It's also chambered in 308. If I fail to mention that, sometimes I get to talking and forget what needs saying. Oh, I forgot it's also got the Accu trigger on it, so you can uh, you can really get your accuracy down with it. This old baby here, I really like it. I bought this rifle second hand, but it's a uh, Winchester Model 70 lightweight. Chambered in 270, and uh, the only difference in the uh, lightweight and the featherweight is the uh, up here on the stock. I think that featherweight's got a different kind of kind of tip on the stock here, kind of flares out or something. I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's a little bit different. It's you got your three three position safety as well but it's got a wing safety to operate with your thumb all the way back locks the bolt locks the trigger halfway locks the trigger but you can work the bolt butter smooth on that bolt all the way forward fire yep got your uh, Got your floor plate. I think it holds four rounds, I believe. I think it holds four four in the magazine and one in the one in the chamber. I believe that's the way it goes. This gun was in bad bad shape when I got it. The stock was all abused. This is not a this is not a pre-64 or, a, or a, a, what they call a, a control feed. This is, this is when uh, Winchester was made in the 80s when they were making the push feed guns. Some people say they're more like Remington's than they are Winchester's, but I don't care what they say. I think this Winchester's a little bit better quality than the Remington's, to tell you the truth about it. That's just my opinion, but I kind of think that. But, uh, yeah, it's got a, uh, a Nikon 4 to 12 scope on it. I think that's what they used to call the, uh, they used to call that their varmint scopes, I think. But you could get some distance with this. It's, uh, Got good clear glass. I like those Nikon scopes. They don't make them anymore, I know. And back in the day when these scopes were bought, Nikons were top of the line. I mean, they were well respected. I think they lost a little bit of their respectability some way or another. I think a lot of that's due to to these uh, these writers and, and promoters and stuff. You know, something new and different comes along and they company throws a little money behind it for promotion and advertisement and everybody that does reviews on YouTube is going to jump on it you know they'll they'll send them send them a little money to do the, the review on it and they'll they'll praise it to high heaven and ah oh, there's a lot of that goes around they try to 
make you think you got to have the latest and the greatest, you know, and everything that they tell you is uh, you ought to just throw this thing in the trash and go out and buy you whatever they're trying to sell, you know, that's bullshit. I'm not, I'm not one to give up on my, my good scopes that I'm satisfied with to run out and buy some crap that supposed to be the greatest thing in the world just because so-and-so says so. I mean, who in the hell are they? Too much of that mess going on. Don't be gullible and don't be fooled by all that promotional stuff. And surely don't believe everything you see on YouTube or the internet. Or anywhere else for that matter. Here's a little... Here's a little... Uh, A little single shot rifle. This is a CVA Hunter. It's chambered. It's empty. It's a break open rifle. It's chambered in 7mm 08. It's a little round right there. Not much different than a not much different than a 308. Just a uh, a little bit smaller diameter on the bullet part of it. They do a real good job on game. Deer size game and up. Yeah, I like this little gun. It's got a uh, Bushnell banner scope on it with a illuminated, illuminated reticle. Good little rifle. It's also got your threaded uh, threaded barrel. I forget what size threads those are. I I got a uh, I've got a uh, flash hider that I did have on it, but I took it off and put it on something else. I don't own a. Uh, I don't own a suppressor. Wish I did. Wish they'd make them legal where we could all get one. Yep. Well, I guess that's about uh, that's about all I got for you guys. I sure do. Uh, trying to think of what else I got to say. Let me take a break and we'll come back. I'm back with one more gun I want to show you guys. This is an old rifle I found in the pawn shop. It was just uh, just about to give to me to get it out of there. It wasn't in very good shape at all, but I, I worked on it a little bit and got it going. Redid the stock. Turned out it had a beautiful black walnut stock on it. It's a Savage Model 340, and this gun was made from the 1940s to the 1980s, but in the 80s they didn't make them exactly like this. This is one of the old ones. As near as I can tell, this gun was made between 45 and 50 between 1945 and 1950, somewhere in that area. And with these old guns, it's hard to, it's hard to really, they didn't keep good records on them. You know, we were living in different times back then where records weren't kept. And uh, you just walked in and bought your rifle and walked out with it. Matter of fact, I think this was probably a mail order catalog gun, like from Sears or J.C. Penney's or Montgomery Wards, they all sold these rifles like this in catalogs. You just uh, sent your order blank and your postal money order in and about a week or two later postman brought your gun to your house and that was that was the end of that, you know, that's how things were done in the good old days when we lived, had, had, had freedom in this country. But this is a uh, this is a Savage 340, and it, what it is, it's a bolt action 3030. 
It's an old bolt action 3030. It's magazine fed. Magazine's metal. Everything's metal on this gun. There's no plastic on this one. They didn't use plastic back in the, back in the, this this day and time. It's got a mag, big old magazine well that this mag goes in. I think this magazine holds three rounds, and you put one in your chamber, and you got a total of four rounds to go hunting with. Oh Lord, don't tell me I put that in there. Right? got a uh, control feed action like an old Mauser show you it's got that big old claw <laughs> extractor on it right there it just it just grabs on to that to that round and takes it right on up in there <laughs> got a uh, real smooth bolt got a, a thumb safety right there When you put it on safe, it locks your bolt or locks your trigger. It doesn't have a position where you can operate the bolt without the trigger. When you take it off the of safe, it's ready to fire then. has a barrel band on it that's uh, connected with that, uh, that front screw right there. screws into a barrel band and contracts that barrel down into that stock. This is back in the day before they free floated stuff. The barrel band was tore up on this one. I had to uh, I had to fabricate a barrel band. And uh, like I said, I took some of the dents and dings and the scratches, a lot of sanding, a lot of a lot of work with a steam iron and a wet rag to pull those gouges out and I got it all where it's looking pretty nice. It's respectable looking now. Pretty old gun. Got a pretty stock on it. This is a cheap gun. Or considered cheap back in the day. But it's not cheap made. Savage always loves these barrel nuts. That's how they set the head space. But uh, I thought I'd get this out and show you guys. You don't see many bolt action 3030s, but that's what this one is. It's a bolt action 3030. Alright, well, I'll let you guys go. Hope you enjoyed the little old video. Stay tuned for the next one. Be sure to like and subscribe. Help the channel out. Catch you later. Bye.